What's going on everyone, Captain Horn here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I hope you enjoy watching and maybe even learn a thing or two from this video. Before we begin, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It takes less than 5 seconds and it would greatly help my channel out. If you are interested in supporting myself and my channel, be sure to check out the different tiers in my Patreon for different rewards. If you are interested in becoming an active member in my community, or would like to find others to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator, feel free to join my Discord. The link to both my Patreon and Discord are in the description. Let's get right into this video. In today's video guys, we're going to learn how to bring in this beautiful aircraft known as the 787-10 Dreamliner in for an instrument approach or an ILS landing. Now first, let's go over what an ILS is. Well, it consists of two different things. The first one is what's called a localizer, and the localizer is simply a radio signal that is shooting straight out from the runway a pretty good distance that communicates with your aircraft and provides horizontal guidance for the aircraft. So essentially what this means is the localizer will line your aircraft up with the runway as good as possible. The second aspect to an ILS landing is what's called a glide slope. Now this is your vertical guidance and this allows your aircraft to descend at a constant rate in order to make contact with the runway. It is literally a slope at which the aircraft is going to glide in order to land on the runway because obviously you can't just sit at 5,000 feet. If you do that then you'll just fly right over the runway. So now that we know the basics of an ILS, let's go into the cockpit, set one up, and perform one. Alright, now that we are in the captain's seat, we can set up an ILS. Now, it's actually really simple to set up an ILS, and um, the 787 is like a spaceship. I mean, look at this thing. It's crazy. All these touch screens and everything. And we're going to need what's called an FMC, which is right down here. And if you have seen my MCDU tutorial for the Airbus or watched ILS landing for the Airbus, it's pretty much the exact same process, except there is a few differences in the actual FMC. I mean, for one, it's it's touchscreen. Like, what the heck is that? Anyway, a quick way, we need to get down here, and a quick way to get down there is actually pressing Control and the number 3 on your keyboard, and it'll bring you right down here. Now, it looks really similar to an Airbus MCDU, and it is. It, it's really similar to it. There is a few differences. But what we need is... Um, we can go to the init ref page right here and here's where your perf page is where you can set up your cruise altitude reserves and cost index but we don't need that for an ILS what we do need is this RTE button and that stands for route and it's right beside the init ref page and click on that and we have an origin and destination now for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to be taking off from Charlotte and landing at Charlotte but uh, you can always just fill in whatever destination you want. For instance, I could fill in Origin Charlotte and Destination Atlanta Georgia and still perform an ILS landing. But I'm just going to be doing a pattern. So Origin, we're going to use the keypad over here and I'm going to type in KCLT and put it in our Origin. And again, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to type in KCLT again as the destination. You need to have a destination in though. Alright, after we fill that in, what we need to do is head over to this DEP ARR page and that stands for departure and arrival right beside the route that's very convenient just click on that and you can set up a departure if you want now if you're doing a full route then you most likely will have a SID that you're gonna follow out of whichever airport but to do an ILS landing all you need is an arrival so I'm just gonna set up an arrival into Charlotte click on this and now we are offered a bunch of stars and approaches now a star stands for standard terminal arrival route and this is generally used like always during an approach into a major airport and this provides separation and makes the air traffic controllers job a lot easier because the star provides a bunch of waypoints that guides you right into the runway and the air traffic controllers don't freak out and you can imagine if there was no stars and like 20 different aircraft coming in at once then that would get very stressful on a controller anyway we don't really need a star just if you're going to practice but you most likely will have a star again if you are on a route but what we do need is these runways which say ILS and obviously if we hit the next page button we can scroll down and find more runways but these say RNAV well that is a different kind of approach that's kind of similar to an ILS and that's another video so we definitely want one of these runways that say ILS 
And for the sake of this video, I'm going to pick ILS 36 left. And of course, obviously, your runway might be different, but just make sure it says ILS. And then just click on it. And now it's automatically going to fill in a transition, which in this case is the waylet transition. And that is just fine. And we go to route down here and hit activate. And then this execute lights up. Go ahead and hit execute. All right. After that, what we can do is come up back up here. And we can switch this over to the map by coming up here and hitting this boxed in ND. And click that and we get a map just like that. And I'm going to hide the yoke. All right. And it is very zoomed in. Well, the range is just right here, this range knob. And you can scroll it in and out just like this. And it shows our range. This is one nautical mile. And we can continue to scroll out. And we will notice that we now have a nice little ring. So what we're going to do is take off and actually take a right and then come right around here and in intersect our waylet intersection. I'm trying to zoom out, sorry. Um, there you can kind of see our waylet intersection right there. And that is the first uh, waypoint into the actual runway. All right. And if you are going to do pattern work, we need to look at some charts and verify a few things. So for that, let's head over to Sky Vector. All right, Sky Vector is a very useful thing, and real-world pilots actually use it. Sky Vector will, you can go to any airport and find approach plates and departure plates from any airport. So I am obviously going to go to Charlotte, so I'm going to type KCLT in this search bar right up here. Hit go, and it puts my crosshair over Charlotte, and I'm going to zoom in. And here is Charlotte. All you want to do is simply hold your mouse over the airport, right click, and hold your mouse over the first line, which is like blue. And here is all of our instrument approach procedures, and we can scroll down to see our departure procedures, and even some standardized terminal arrival, which is your stars. All right, now I'm going, since I am using ILS 36 left, then I'm going to click ILS 36 left, right here, the ILS or lock. All right. And we click that and this approach plate comes up. Now this looks complicated, but it's really not. All we have to look at is this frequency up here. And this is the LOX, that's DME. And it's 110.15. Simply remember that. And the next thing that we need is some altitude restrictions. And remember that waylet trans transition that we selected. Well, here it is right down here, the waylet. And we see that it says 7,000 feet. And this line under it means at or above 7,000 feet. If there's a line on both sides, it means you have to be at 7,000 feet. And if there was a line above it, that would mean you have to be at or below 7,000 feet. And we see the next waypoint is Nuxi, and we it's the same thing, at or above 6,000, 5, 4, 3, 2, and a half, and we'll be on the glide slope by then to make contact with the runway and land. And the same thing, we have a bird's eye view from right up here of how it's going to work right into the runway. All right, so we just need to remember that at that first waypoint, we need to be at or above 7,000 feet. And our FMC actually tells us that. And just to verify, our frequency is 110.15. If we head back into the simulator, go back down to our FMC, and we go to this nav rad page, this is radio navigation we see our ILS and our frequency, which is 110.15. So that's a good way to verify that. And we need to be at or above 7,000 feet. And generally it would show in your legs page, but I'm not sure why it's not. Maybe it will when we get in the air. But I know in the Airbus, if you go to your flight plan page, it does show your altitude restrictions. But since we just looked at the chart, we do know that we need to be at or above 7,000 feet by the time we hit that waylit intersection. So I'm just going to set my altitude up to 7,000 feet, just like that. And with that being said, we can now take off and go to that intersection and perform our ILS landing. So let's go ahead and take off. This is a very short runway, by the way, at Charlotte. Runway 5 is not too long. I would have much rather taken off on 18 center, 36 center. But this is just going to have to work. V1 for a 787, I believe, is like 150 knots, and rotate is around 160. So that's good to keep in mind. And there's V1 right there. And we can go ahead and just let the pressure off the stick, and we are in the air. And we can get our gear up. And I'm going to start that right turn all the way to our Wayla intersection. Just like this. 
and I purposely set the overcast clouds because that's when you want to really do an ILS approach is whenever the conditions are terrible because I mean you could definitely do a, a visual approach if it's clear outside but whenever pilots can't see and there's really thick clouds and low clouds then yeah you're gonna have to use an ILS all right, I'm now on an intercepting course with our line, and I'm going to go ahead and engage LNAV and VNAV, just like that. And this is the equivalent in an Airbus to the um, just engaging the autopilot and it following the FMC. And then our autopilot button is actually located right here, and we can engage that. And another important thing is to turn on your flight directors, which is that little switch right there and I am actually going to engage vertical speed just like this and start ascending up to our 7,000 feet and the plane is trying to get on an intercepting course with this purple line and it's going to make a left turn here soon and follow it. Alright we're now on an intercepting course and another important thing on the 787 is your auto throttle is actually right here and it's already lit up A slash T and that's auto throttle and you can arm the auto throttle with these switches right here and I just have it set up to 250 knots because we are going to be below 10,000 feet. Alright we have now started our right turn and we're going to come right around here and intersect this waylet intersection at 7,000 feet and I actually did have to start descending. It appears that the 787 is a little buggy right now and I don't know why but it just flew past 7,000 feet so I had to engage vertical speed right here and just spin this knob until it says negative 1500 and it is getting us down to 7,000 feet. Uh, another important thing is these little white dots right here on our altimeter and right here down below on the primary flight display. Now this right here is your localizer and this diamond is showing way to the left right here. Now this is going to change actually, it's going to be right over here, uh, no sorry, this means that we are too far to the right and we need this diamond to be right in the middle, right in between this line right here. This one over here is your glide slope and this diamond, if it's too high, that means you're way below glide slope. And if it's all the way at the bottom, that means you're way below the glide slope. And again, we want this in the middle as well. So if this is in the middle and this is in the middle, then we know that we are perfectly fine and we're exactly where we need to be. And another thing is your glide slope is not going to pop up until you are pretty close to the runway. We are now getting very close to this waylet and this diamond is going to start moving over like this here very soon and our glide slope diamond has just appeared and it's pretty much right in the middle so I'm actually going to start descending because if you remember on the chart it said we need to be at or above 6,000 feet during the Nuxi waypoint so I'm going to engage vertical speed and start descending again and our localizer diamond is now starting to slowly move over and with that we can actually engage this LOC mode and this is localizer mode just press that button and the plane is now going to guide itself all the way over here and get lined up with the runway and we see our glide slope diamond is slowly moving down which means we are currently above the glide slope and once your glide slope diamond appears you can engage this APP button which is approach mode and we'll notice on the top here it has switched to lock and G slash S. This is, means it's following the localizer and it is on the glide slope. And you see we have just started descending pretty rapidly to try and catch up to this glide slope. And it's going, the plane is going to hold this glide slope diamond in the middle and it's going to, it's banking to line itself up with the runway and try to get this diamond in the middle as well. With, and this is our localizer. And we have busted through the cloud layer and we see that we are in fact lined up with the runway and the plane is making a few corrections. At this point what we need to do is I need to really slow down. The 787 is very quick so I am going to engage my speed brake. And we can get all of our lights on which they are already on and start slowing down a lot. We want to be at around 160 knots so I'm going to use my speed hold and I hate it when it jumps by tens like that. 
There we go. And we can start lowering the flaps down and we can drop our gear. Another thing with the 787 is we can arm the speed brake by just clicking and pulling it back just like that. You see how it moves a little bit? And this is different on the Airbus, you kind of pull it upwards in order to arm it, but just pulling it back like that arms it for the 787. And again, we see that our localizer diamond and glide slope diamond are now in the very exact middle, which means we are exactly where we need to be to land on this runway. Another cool thing is the autopilot and the ILS will automatically compensate for wind so we can see our nose wheel is actually a little bit to the left and if we go back in here and look at our winds it is apparently it's going with us but it is kind of pushing us to the left or the sorry the uh, right a little bit and that is why the nose gear is trying to compensate for that all right we are about to make contact with the runway and with the 787 what you need to do is disengage autopilot and that's via this big bar right here and you need to disengage the auto throttle by flipping these switches right here once we are very close because this does not have an auto land hopefully they're gonna fix that here soon because I really like the auto land features I usually disengage right around here and release the auto throttles and it's your plane to land and there's touchdown and we can reverse the engines and it's a little bouncy <laughs> And there you have it. After you land, get your speed brakes up and get your flaps back up. Speed brake down, I mean. <laughs> but that, my friends, is how you do an ILS landing with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It is quite simple and now it will take a little bit of practice. It can be a steep learning curve, it was for me, but just go out to an airport like I have just done and practice these and just practice your landings all together and you will be just fine. So that is going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. I have a lot of videos on ILS landings for other aircraft and autopilot and FMC, MCDU tutorials out there. So check out my other videos. Um, keep a lookout for more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 videos and tutorials and live streams with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or night, depending on when you're watching this, and I will see you guys in the next video.